Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Power Egg X from Power Vision. These guys are known for their larger drone, about twice as big as that little egg there. And also they have their Power Ray, their underwater ROV. I also did a review on, and they also have the Power Dolphin, which is kind of a boat slash drone that can look underwater with the camera. They were nice enough to send me a Power Egg X for review. Super excited. I'm gonna do a full on unbiased review on this. So I've got the wizard version here. It's the actual Power Egg X itself. And then it has all these extra peripherals. It's got the waterproof case. It's got the floaties. That's kind of like, I guess, the fly more combo, if you would. So we're going to go ahead and unbox all this stuff in this video. And remember, this is going to be a full-on series. We're going to go super in-depth here. And then we're going to do our flight test. We'll also do a water test, since it has this is the water combo. And this one does all these other things. Like, you can just use it as, like, a tripod camera. It does face tracking. So pretty imaginative, these guys. They're actually trying to make it, like, a universal camera drone. So pretty cool. We're going to check it out. Hang in there. And uh, let's get started. I just want to quickly cover uh, some of the features of this drone and you can see that it has like this little tripod so you can stick the egg on this tripod and it has autonomous AI camera mode so it can follow objects kind of like a tracking drone would but you can use the camera stationary on the ground if you wanted to. It's got an aerial drone mode of course, three axis gimbal stabilization, it can shoot in 4k 60 frames per second so a lot of the newer drones now are having this capability. AI recognition and tracking, that's the face tracking. I was talking about remote voice dubbing, 30 minutes of flight time and 3.5 hours in just camera mode time if you just wanted to use it as like a stationary camera or handheld camera. Max wind speed at 10 meters per second and it is waterproof with the housing accessory only in wizard version. So that is the wizard version over there on the back I got. Let's spin this around real quick. Let's just take a look at the back of the box. And this is a perfect example of how it's gonna look when it's in that AI tripod mode. It does face tracking, image tracking. There's the drone mode. You can also use it as a handheld gimbal, stabilized gimbal. That's pretty cool, huh? And they have a picture of it here in a storm because it is waterproof with that waterproof housing accessory. Remember, I've also done a lot of reviews on the Swell Pro. The Swell Pro Splash drone is their larger drone and the Swell Pro Spry was their little mini waterproof drone. So this one actually might be cutting into their market too since they have this waterproof housing. We're gonna see how good it is. Hopefully it's <laughs> waterproof. We sure are going to test if that is waterproof in these series of reviews. Anyway, let's pull this thing out of the box. So just a standard cardboard box here with a pretty neat looking case. They were kind of known for their, their submarine, their ROV, at being like, the if DJI made an ROV, that's what it would look like. It was that white and black. It had a really good fit and finish. The performance was a little less to be desired. It was a little bit shaky, not very good in a little bit of current. They do have a great fit and finish at Power Vision. You can see that we just kind of have this denim material here. And then it's kind of like that compressed foam material that the DJI drones used to come in. Interesting type of handle system where it's just like handles and then you have this Velcro here. There's a nice little image here on which way to orient the box before you open it up. So here we go, first time opening it. Wow, there it is. On the upper level, there's just a little, this looks like all the manual stuff here. Just kind of wedged in that little notch there on the top. But here it is, it's the Powerig X. Autonomous personal AI camera is what the box is saying. It's just a little cover on top. I actually flip this over and look at all this stuff. So it's going through um, all the stuff in the box. Power stuff. Let's unbox this really quick. Let's just see what this is before we get out the good stuff. Just a regular figure eight plug, a white power brick with two USB ports there. Plug it looks like for charging the battery. And then these are your USB cables, so with Apple and Android. And then we got some propellers in there. Yeah, so it looks like two propellers here. See those guys? And these are gonna be the extra propellers. And then also just this little toolkit, which looks like it has the uh, screwdriver. So it's like a universal star screwdriver. I am seeing a few little black screws in there too. That's everything in this box. Let's pull out the controller. Let's leave the egg in there for just a minute. Now this thing is hefty, man. This is kind of what Power of Vision is known for. They go through all the stops to bring you some quality, at least fit and finish products, like I was saying. 
and this thing does not disappoint as far as what it looks like and feels like. Two trigger buttons on the right, one with picture, one with video. We've got some doors here, a USB door that we can pop open. Almost looks like this thing's gonna be waterproof because it has these little rubber seals here, that's cool. This looks like the gimbal up and down roller. Nice antenna, kind of tucked away and clicking away just like you would see on like a Mavic. See how those antennas just pull out. That's the full extensions out, forward, and that's as far as you can go sideways. And then when you close them up, they have that nice little clicking feel. Of course, you gotta get them the right way and push that in and they have a click. So nicely done there, Power Vision, looking pretty good so far. The sticks are very tight, so very tight uh, thumb sticks here, but it looks like, look at that, that's rubber silicone material. So it looks like they're going for kind of a waterproof or splash proof type of controller as long as all these are, are kind of closed up. This one I can't even open, it's just like kind of glued shut, so maybe that's not in use right now. We have some venting there on the back of the controller, flipping around to the front bottom. It says Power Vision here, we have a little micro USB port, and here's our button, so return to home, kind of interesting, it looks like LEDs are on top, so those are gonna light up. We have a return to home, we have a stop, we have a C, and then we have a power. So just four buttons there. And now let's get this controller mount out. Looks like we just snap this up. This is very interesting. Snap this up and pull this out. Wow, so it's like a two-way kind of little leverage system here. Very sturdy, it's feeling very tight. So it's not gonna like, you know, fall on you if you have your phone in there. And as far as what phone fits, it looks like they're still going for like a smaller type of deal. So that's only gonna fit maybe like a larger iPhone in there. Very simple, but man, I gotta tell you guys, I'm just feeling this and this is a heavy controller. So it's got either some tech or some pretty heavy components on this because this is a solid feeling controller. It's pretty small, I have big hands and it kind of feels like maybe a an actual size of like an Xbox game controller. Okay, so the Power Egg X is kind of a modular drone, right? You see the Power Egg there? These are the arms, so check this out. Let's bring out an arm and let's just fully inspect this. So this is like a dual arm system. You see how they're joined at this little component here? We have all the connection ports here, so those are gonna snap into the Power Egg once we bust that out. Uh, flipping it over before we open it up. We've got propellers already mounted, and these are not twist lock propellers, guys, so keep in mind uh, this is gonna take some work with the star wrench they have in the box to undo the two stars per propeller to change those out if you wanted to. But they are collapsing for storage, so they look about the same size as something like the Mavic Pro type of propeller. Pretty nice motors, these things are hefty too. There's no branding on them or KV values, but they are pretty darn hefty feeling. And on the bottom, these are kind of like these feet that pop out. So I'm gonna pull these out, you see how they kind of pop out and snap. So a really nice spring-loaded snap there, they're definitely not gonna fall back down unless maybe you run into something. Snap right back down, and then opening the arm up. You see that? So a nice spring-loading here to open that thing up uh, once you get it on the drone. We got one more of those in the back. So two arm components with two arms each in them, making four arms, of course. Let's go back here and check this out. So this is that little handheld uh, strap. So you see how it kind of has that same component as the arm that you're gonna lock into probably one side to actually hold it as like a handheld gimbal camera. A nice Velcro strap here for keeping it really tight in your hand. Open this up, see what it is. Looks like a bag, nice. To keep at least the egg in here. It looks like the other components definitely aren't gonna fit, but the egg just to protect its shine. Couple more components down here, and let's just see what these are before we bust out the actual egg and then open that other box. So that same shape where we can lock into that modular design in the side and then uh, screwed onto a tripod. And this also looks like a little plug component for that as well. Okay, let's finally grab the egg out and see what this thing is all about. Here it is. And look how small that is. So it basically fits in the palm of my hand. It's probably like two to three times smaller than the original Power Egg. You can see the seams here of all the different panels on it. So we got seams going this way and that way. Um, there's a light in the back, looks like an LED there. It's got the Power Egg uh, insignia on it there. And that's really it, some lights over here with the power button, let's see if we just press it once. Cool, so it's telling us it's fully charged. It looks like they sent it fully charged, and it looks like maybe this is how you pull this thing apart. So let me look at the directions, get this undone, 
and then we'll get started on that. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this for last. I'm gonna go over there and open up that uh, wizard package with all the waterproof stuff and the extra stuff in there. And then we'll come back to the drone and set it up. Okay guys, let's see what this wizard version is all about with this extra stuff for waterproofing and stuff. So just opening the box here and let's see what's inside. Cool, so a couple of water floats it looks like. These are kind of that same kind of box material that came in. And they're just these water floats you're gonna be able to put on the sides of it and the legs to make it floatable on top of the water. Anchor points here, nicely done. These look like awesome little flotation devices that are really gonna be very buoyant. And then you can see how we have this kind of Velcro strapping system. It's just very easily Velcro right here and it looks like they just go around the arms. So pretty well thought out and well executed little flotation devices. And we got two of those. There's a box here. That looks like the battery. Some other peripherals, we'll open that in just a second. And one more box in here and there's nothing else in the main box. This little guy was just kind of separate in the box, basically just a case. And I just want to open this up and see what this is. It's just like another little denim case. It says Power AX on it. And it looks like it's going to be a case for the legs or something. Legs and other peripherals, maybe for the controller. The largest box within that um, extra box is cool. This looks like the waterproof housing. So just wrapped up in some bubble wrap. That's all that's in there. And let's check this thing out. So this is the housing that you're gonna have to put on uh, to make it waterproof, right? So it looks like the entire egg goes in here. They have this little bit of a shielding here, this protective wrap, because this looks like the portion that the camera is gonna be shining through and video taking videos and pictures through. So I'm gonna leave that kind of on there but you can kind of see how it's just like a, a clamp style waterproofing system. Look at these clamps, they just kind of pull out. This is a little latch here. So it's got basically three latches. Let's see how this opens up. Yeah, it's just a clamshell. So very interesting, man, I hope this is gonna be waterproof because as you can see, it's gonna also hug behind the arms or around the arms and this is just like a little dual seal silicone stuff sticking out here to grab around those arms. So we'll go ahead and put that on in just a second after we get all this opened up too. But just a clamshell, kind of neat. Hopefully it's all gonna be waterproof because we're gonna, just, we're gonna also do some water abuse. And then of course the buttons will, can be pressed through here. Oh, that's cool. It's got a caution hot surface sign there, sticker there. So what that's telling me is this is kind of a heat sink uh, for the egg. So it's gonna suck all the heat out here. And so when you're flying it in the water, uh, this is gonna be the heat dissipation. Since you, you, know, you have this capsule encasing the whole thing and capturing the heat, there had to be some way for the heat to dissipate. And it also looks like maybe there's a breathable little diaphragm here, like waterproof little hydrophobic diaphragms on the bottom to maybe let it kind of, the pressure release a little bit so it can still be operational on its um, height hold if it has a barometer in there. So pretty cool little waterproof shell there. This is gonna be really interesting to see how all of this works. Okay, and we've only got two more boxes here. So let's open these two up. I'll start with the small one and it looks like it's just gonna be extra propellers. Yeah, so those same two extra propellers we got in the box with the Power Egg X. Uh, this box gives you an extra f uh, four actually. And the absolute last thing in this entire demo here is the Powerag X battery. So I didn't see a battery in the box there. There may be one in the drone, but I would assume that this, since this is a separate uh, box here, this is an actual extra battery. So we have a plug here. We have some screws. We've got a manual. And let's just open this up and see how the battery looks. Wow, interesting looking battery. It's a 3S high voltage, 11.4 volt uh, battery, and it is a 3800 mAh, and very reminiscent of some other drones. You can see the connectors look very similar. That's how that connects to the drone itself. We've got just a couple of clips on the sides. When it snaps in, those are gonna snap. And there's the power button and the readout here for the charge state, so let's just press that. Looks like it's just about fully charged. This little sticker here that we can peel off just says, please charge to activate battery uh, before use. So I'm just gonna peel that off. So remember those two kits of propellers I got? Those are gonna go with their propellers. And I'm kinda curious what this little bag is. Okay, this is like an OTG cable. So you can see how it has a regular USB on that side. 
and then it has a the older camera style USB. I can't even remember what that's called, but it's it's like a mini USB, I think that is. Anyway, guys, that was absolutely everything in the box. We went through all that stuff and all the extra components. I want to open this thing up now and see how we attach these arms, get these little floaty devices on, see how it all hooks up, and do like a demo on the screen of the interface. So there we go, nice and easy. I just pull this little tab and the whole bottom pops off. So that's the whole egg opened up and let's just really inspect this close up. So first thing I'm seeing as I'm pulling it around to the bottom, check this out. We have two sonic sensors and two optical flow sensors to view the ground, awesome. Hopefully water as well, possibly. Some great venting here, some uh, metal mesh, black metal mesh in there. Flipping it over to the front, there is our camera. So nice looking little camera. I'm just gonna take off this protective plastic here. And it also has this little thing on the bottom here, it's just saying remove the cover before use. So this is actually the, the gimbal lock cover. So let's see if we can take that off by just pushing the sides in a little bit. Let's see, oh, I don't wanna break anything. Yeah, so just a little bit awkward because you gotta squeeze so hard, but you just pull these in, kind of work it, and you can see how that comes off. Let's just take a look at this real quick. So our pitch, up and down, that's as far as it'll go up. Downwards, I assume it's gonna go all the way down, a little bit past uh, 90. And then this is a full three axis, right? So we have also have our roll, very small and delicate. That's the roll maximums. And then the yaw maximum, wow, that thing can yaw quite a bit there. Almost 90 degrees both ways. So that's it, there's a little camera in there. We can look inside, we can see how it's dampened in there. Just pulling it around. And we can kind of see how it has some rubber dampeners in there to keep it um, all vibration free. Miss these guys, these are front, it looks like cameras for probably front obstacle avoidance. Rotating over to the left side, looks like we have a light here. That's definitely not a button door here. Let's pop this up. That looks like that's that little mini uh, USB port there. So the other side has actually another little door here and that's a USB-C. Notice that just setting down the actual egg unit, it doesn't roll around because it is resting right on those uh, sonic sensors. So you're definitely gonna wanna be careful putting this thing down without the arms and stuff on. I wouldn't put it on any dirt or rocks. And this is what happens when you don't read the instructions yet. Actually, these two little press-in tabs, look at that. It popped off the whole top. So I didn't even realize that. There's gotta be a way to get to the battery, right? So it does have a battery currently in there. I'm gonna take off this little warning thing here. This battery is also basically fully charged. Definitely wanna put them on the charger just to activate them and top them off. If you're a guy like me that doesn't read instructions, hopefully this video will, will uh, explain it at my peril. Anyway, how do we take out the battery? So just kind of a pull, not really a push or anything. And there's the battery compartment. That whole thing goes in there. You can see how there's the contacts for the battery up there. Very similar to other drones. But man, when this battery out, battery is out, it just kind of feels like almost like a Mavic Mini weight. It's super duper light. Pop that battery back in, let's see how it goes in. Yeah, so you don't really get a super satisfying click, but it does kind of click and so you know it's in there. Anyway, so don't forget to take off that top shell and then let's try to put on uh, these arms here. So. Remember, the arms are significant to each of their sides. So we'll just match up these two guys and then just pushing them straight down. Don't really have a click, so you're gonna wanna make sure those seat really nicely. So that's one side on the left side and then here's the right side. So you gotta kinda match it up to these notches. You see how there's these slide notches in there. Match it up, grab the bottom of the drone and then just push with your thumb so they seat really nice and tight. Top piece, looks like we wanna slide in the front cover there first, see the little tab? Push down the back, and then just push it down until it snaps in, and that thing's ready to go. As far as opening up the arms goes, really easy, boom, just like other drones. And the other side, there we go, click. We can't forget to open up these little guys. The arms do feel nice and sturdy, they're not um, excessively you know, rocking around. They do feel like they're snapping in there and solid in the sides. And check it out, that drone is ready to go. It's 
<laughs> kind of interesting, isn't it? While we have this thing all together, let's try to put the waterproof casing on here. So it's gonna be super important to keep these silicone seals clean, guys. Do not set this down in like sand or dirt. Always check them. Uh, just because I have experience with waterproof drones, you really always wanna check your silicone seals before you fly. Maybe even put a little bit of like silicone lube on them once in a while just to keep them nice and soft. And uh, just really check that before you seal that up because that would really ruin your day, right? If you close this up, you had some dirt or gravel on one of the edges, you didn't notice it, and you've dunked it in the water, and there you go, you got water in your drone. So really important to check those sealing surfaces for dirt and grit. Pretty self-explanatory, it's only gonna go on kind of one way. The top has the little rubber power there, so uh, just basically slide it in Let's see how we should do this. Back in first, maybe? I'm just really making sure I kind of get the rubber in the grooves there. The plastic groove is actually going into that silicone groove. So just make sure it's like that on both sides as you slide it in from the back. Just push it in until it can't go anymore. Get everything out of the way and close this guy up. There we go. Top latch on maybe first. Okay, and then the side latches. Gonna wanna make sure we put this thing on right because we'd hate for water to get in there, get in there, right? So side latches just push back until they kind of pop over the tabs, click it tight. This is a little harder than the top. Looks like you gotta kind of push the whole thing kind of together. Push it back till these things pop over because they're pretty tight and then click it shut. Just do a quick little once over, make sure everything is sealed up. We don't want any <laughs> water to get in there, obviously. And just make sure all of the notches and little channels are all correct. And that's basically it. Let me just pull this thing off. Looks like they got two of these on there. And that's how that camera is gonna look. So we're definitely gonna be seeing if there's glare inside of there because this is another glass piece, right? So we're gonna see how if there's any like warping in the video or weird arborations uh, while we're flying it with this on and cruising in the water as well. Anyway, that's how that waterproof shell goes on. Pretty simple. And while we do have this waterproof shell on guys, why not put these little floaties on here? So these are kind of interesting. It looks like they kind of only go on one way. And all we're doing is we're just kind of matching up the shape of the landing gear here. It's kind of like a D shape. And so you want to get the right one and just basically slide it right on uh, the bottom of the landing gear, just like this. So front and back, sliding those on. They only can kind of go in one way. And then once we get those slid in, we just open up these Velcro guys. And all you're really doing, very simple, just making it a little bit tight, I guess, and Velcroing it down. You see how it's going over the top of the arm? So it looks like you just really want to get it as tight as possible. Uh, before you velcro that shut just so it's not going to be sliding over into the motor and Hindering the motor and its performance. It's a very simple and well thought out little system here and There it is the power rig with its floaties on so it's gonna land you can land in the water It's not gonna flip over. It's got a super wide stance So it looks like unless it's huge choppy waves that thing will not flip over remember how I tested the swell pro splash drone uh, I really want to see what happens if possibly it flips over. Maybe I'll do that Kind of close to me in case I need to swim out and get it if it can't flip back over but that'll be interesting to like run into a wave or something and see if it does flip over like what it does if it'll self right itself or what all right so continuing on the disassembly remember we have to pop up the top here to get the legs off we'll just do that again and super simple I'm just gonna kind of brace the battery and pull up so those slide out so pretty quick I mean you know it's not super duper fast but Fairly fast enough. I mean, you could do it all with it less than a minute. Get it ready for water or get it ready for each mode, basically. And so this is gonna enable it to be used as just like a little handheld gimbal. So I'm gonna slide it in just like I would the arm. You see how that kind of slides in there. At this point, I guess I could also put on this other one here. You see how that's the tripod mount? Let's see if I can put these on both at the same time. Yeah, so I guess you could if you wanted to. And then just put the top back on. Of course, you didn't have to put that on. See how fast it is just to get rid of that. Slide it on out. There we go. Pop this back on. 
So again, keep track of this top cover. That's the only thing I can see is you might, you know, set this top cover down and it might get a little bit scratched up. So just take care in where you're setting this as you're going through the different modes. But there we go. We have a nice little handheld cam, little steady cam with a three axis gimbal we can take around with us. Of course, it's not gonna be waterproof in this mode, so be careful of that camera. But a cool option to have a drone for all of your filming needs. If I try to flip it over and put it on the other side, it just will not go on. And it looks like all they needed to do was maybe a little bit of a universal connector, but it will not slide on the left-hand side. So that may be a little bit of a con. And this one does not go on the right side, so the tripod mount has to go on the left side. Another little bit of a con, they only give you a filler plug that can go on the left side. Maybe they want to make sure they put like two plugs, one for each side, because this will just not go in on this side, so I can't put anything there. So there'll be a little bit of a hole there uh, for this demo. So maybe something they can improve if somebody doesn't want to have that undesirable hole with the open ports there. One of the other cons, guys, there's no tripod in the box. So it might have been cool if they included a tripod. I have my little DJI Osmo action here with one of those Gorilla Grip tripods. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and let's try to mount this on it. It's actually called a uh, Joby tripod. I'll have the links in the description, guys, of all the stuff I use. Tripod hole lined up and screw this thing in there. You see how it's hanging off the side of the tripod. So just make sure your tripod is like extended far enough. I could honestly see if you had like one of those little mini ones, um, if, if it got tapped or bumped, boom, it would just fall over. I can already feel it like falling over really hard on the left side. So just really precaution. I mean, this is not a cheap drone, so make sure you don't let that thing fall. Not gonna be quite as, you know, compact and universal, but you can kind of use it as a little selfie cam. You see how I just have it sticking out there and uh, looks like it would work pretty good. A little bit heavy, definitely not comparable to one of those little mini pocket uh, cameras. Okay guys, so that really does just go over completely everything in the box. All the different modes, tripod, handheld, drone mode, and drone waterproof mode. I wanna charge all this stuff up and let's just see how the interface looks and how everything looks when it's powered up. You're gonna to wanna to download the Vision Plus 2 app from your app store, whether it be Android or Apple, plug in, the correct uh, USB cable that came with it in the package for your phone. In this case, it's the USB type C. What I'm gonna do first is go ahead and power on the controller. So just pressing power here. And you hear that beeping. And now I'm gonna plug it into the phone. Let's see what happens. Nothing's happening yet. So I'm gonna just hit power vision and let's power on the drone. Looks like you want to do the press, press and hold, kind of like DJI, same thing, until you see the lights come up on it. And let's just see kind of what the gimbal does while we're at it. It's doing its self checks. Wow, keep in mind guys, there's no lights on the arms, right? I see no lights whatsoever on the arms, so hopefully those two lights, uh, the only two lights on the sides are gonna be good enough. And now I just kind of want to look at the interface and it says open vision plus two to handle power vision always. Yes. I'm going to check always. Okay. You have to log in with an email even to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. You get like a code sent to your email to verify and you're kind of registered. So let me do that real quick. Okay. So just punched in my code and it verified it. You can also just use text on your phone if you wanted to. I did my email, but you can also just have it texted to your phone. I'm just gonna accept the agreement. If I just press plus, it says flight record. So that's how you access your flight records in this main screen. And also you can find your aircraft from here too. So kind of like find my drone that DJI has. It looks like it has the same thing. So it's not really noticing uh, my controller maybe. So I'm gonna try this again. Okay, so I was having a little bit of a connection issue and what happened was it threw up the login to email screen over the other allow access to your phone settings screen. So that's why I wasn't able to connect there. So if you have that problem, guys, just go ahead and restart your uh, application and then it will go through those access, allow phone access settings again. Okay, so when I plugged in uh, that USB cable to my phone again, check this out. The USB accessory mode of the system is not activated successfully. App needs to be restarted. Okay, um, let's try that again. So I'm just gonna leave it in that time. I'm just gonna leave the USB plug in. There we go. So it's all connected. So if you have the connection issues like that once in a while, just kind of restart the app and 
plug in again and you should be okay. Just make sure you confirm all the access to your phone and all that stuff. Okay, so I want to update this thing. So I'm going to go back. And because it did say there was an update, new firmware found now, it says up here. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and download this. And there you go, we got our download ticking away. It's going about 1% per second. This is about 100 seconds to do this update. I'm not seeing anything else notifying me after it downloaded. Access device. So I don't know what happened with that update. It just kind of went away after it downloaded. So maybe a little con there and a little bit of a confusion on what to do with the updates. This is looking like a device checklist here, a flight mode. I for actually forgot to mention this, guys. Um, you see here on the bottom of the controller here, there's actually different modes. So you have professional mode and it kind of buzzes when I switch this. So professional, normal, and easy mode. So what I'm thinking is that's just gonna like adjust the rates to like, you know, sport mode, uh, GPS mode or cinematic mode, kind of like what DJI does. I'm just taking a look at this device checklist. Uh, everything looks normal. The IMU is flashing like abnormality once in a while, so I may want to do leveling on that real quick before I fly. We'll kind of see how it see how it just went into normal, and now it's out. Everything else looks normal. Controller is in mode two. Looks like we can change it from this screen, so you can be in one mode one, mode two, or mode three, depending on how you like to control your devices. The remote controller battery level is 68%. We can scroll down here. Battery interface, the aircraft battery level 82. Um, aircraft battery temperature zero. That's interesting. Gimbal status normal, remaining capacity on SD card. That's one of the things I didn't see. I didn't see where the SD card uh, goes in. I'm gonna have to double check that. If you look inside the battery bay there under the battery, it looks like that's where you're gonna put in your uh, micro SD card. So I really like, guys, I really like these uh, SanDisk uh, Extreme Pro cards. They have the really high speed f for good 4K video. And especially since this thing can do 4K 60 frames per second, you wanna get a good card like this that's not gonna be hindered uh, by the higher specs. So definitely, I'll have these linked in the description. Definitely pick up some of those. I use those on all my 4K drones. They seem to work very good. I never have any uh, corruption problems with these ones. Let's see how this thing goes in. A little bit awkward. Uh, let's see how it goes. So it's not even like a push and lock. It's just you push it in and this little tab keeps it held in there. So a little bit of an interesting setup, but as long as it works, it should be okay. Let's see how we take this out. Kind of an interesting process. You're gonna have to push this thing down and pull the card out at the same time. So there we go. I kind of squoze both both of my fingers in there and I was able to do it. But um, maybe a little bit of con there. It would have been great if they just had like original like traditional push lock type of system. The remaining capacity on aircraft memory. So apparently it has an internal memory. And there we go. So we're in our video interface. We're in the actual HUD mode here. Looks like we have 12 satellites in the house. Down here we have all of our telemetry and we have our return to home, AI modes, all this stuff. The first thing I want to do is just adjust the gimbal. So on the left trigger you can see my finger in the video. I'm gonna pull this up and down. So that is the gimbal. The gimbal roller is kind of hard plastic and it's slipping through my finger a little bit. So, you know, not the greatest control, but you see how I can go pretty slow. And so it's, you know, it's good enough. Just gonna click a couple of these buttons. So this one, uh, that's like the gallery. Yeah, so if we wanted to get in our photo or video, obviously I don't have anything in there so we can't access that. Going back out, it takes a little while. There's our video back. Let's go into the Google Maps. Wow, so it's showing me, okay, yeah, so it's just all the information that's gonna be on the map. Switch between map layers, just like any other Google Map type of thing. And that's interesting, I'm not seeing any uh, map there because I do have data and Wi-Fi on this thing. Nope, no maps coming in. So that's kind of silly. I don't know why it's not uh, bringing in the maps. Maybe it'll come in when I do my first first flight test, but a little bit of a con there. This little icon up here, that's gonna be going back into our drone video. If we go into AI mode, okay, this is kind of cool. Check this out. Normal mode, follow me mode, point of interest, real-time video, and time-lapse. So pretty cool. It's got a lot of those modes that the other drones have. One thing we didn't really look at is the lag time. So let me put my hand up to it. 
So that's kind of normal for these kind of Wi-Fi drones. You see how that's a few hundred milliseconds of lag. So guys, before we wrap this up, a couple of things I wanted to go through. We didn't really explore the camera settings and also the settings button up here. So we'll go into the camera first. As you can see, we hit that. We can scroll through picture and video just like any other drone. We'll hit the settings and we can do um, auto and manual mode. So of course auto mode it's going to have everything like the ISO and shutter speed to auto. You can adjust our EV value still in auto mode if you wanted to. You can also do uh, metering mode. So elevated metering or center weight. Looks like we can't adjust that when we're in auto mode. If we switch to manual you kind of open up all the ISO, shutter speeds. EV actually turns to auto and your metering mode turns to auto. If I hit the camera here for video, uh, we can adjust our video size. If I go up to 4K, we can switch between 24 and 60 frames per second. So each one you can go between 24 and 60 on the 1080 as well. You can also do 120 on 1080, there's an option there. And then you can go down to 720 and do from 24 to 60. And there's also um, HD slow motion. You see on the bottom here, 720 resolution. And wow, we can go from 120 all the way up to 240 uh, frames per second. One more tab here, we can go over to the right. And here's all kind of the nitty gritty options of video recording. So it seems to me like if I go back to home, the waterproof mode, it's basically uh, the same thing, like if you have that waterproof case on. But if you see here, disabled forward uh, sensors. So those sensors are gonna be disabled when you have that waterproof case on because it's conflicting, I guess, with the um, the case there. So let's get back into the interface, guys, and let's hit the actual main settings icon. So this doesn't have anything really to do with the camera only stuff. So we have our main drone highlighted here, our main settings, flight control settings, return point settings, we can do um, user location, starting point of flight, or the current location of the aircraft. So very similar settings, return to altitude. It's currently at 20 meters. Uh, you can set that if you wanted to. Sensor calibration, so I'm getting this IMU issue. So I'm gonna do an IMU calibration right now. Now it's telling me to turn it up like this. I'm just following the directions. So I'll go ahead and hold it like this. Now it's telling me to turn it upside down. Okay, and now it's saying to uh, turn it on the other side like this. And now we wanna turn it face down. So we'll see if that kinda gets rid of that IMU sensor error. And now we wanna go face up. Just basically following what the instructions say, trying to keep it as still as possible. There we go. Let's see if we can go back into uh, the flight settings. There we go, so you see how now that's normal. So I guess if that happens, guys, if you see that IMU abnormality, like I keep seeing originally, go into your settings and then sensor calibration, right? So you can do all the stuff there. Probably wanna do a compass calibration out in the flying field initially, away from all your electronics and stuff. This is not a good place to do it. Anyway, going back, just kind of continuing down the list. Uh, it is in beginner mode, so in beginner mode it will only fly within a 30 meter bubble basically. So I'm going to turn that beginner mode off. Speed and sensitivity will significantly increase. So if you're really new guys to drones, keep that beginner mode on until you're comfortable flying it. Maximum altitude, let's see how high we can go. You can go up to 500 meters, so I'm going to change that to 500 because we don't want to be limited if we get into some situations. Flight distance limit, you can turn that on or off. Uh, if you turn it on, you can adjust that between 20 and 5,000 meters. So you can kind of do your own little bubble. And control sticks, EX curve, EXP curve. If you wanted to, you could adjust that. So that's good to have those options to adjust all of your exponential and all that kind of stuff. We want to go keep going and checking down this list. That was everything on the main flight control settings. Enable front visual system. The real-time obstacle detection radar map will be displayed on the flight interface. Cool. So that's if uh, you are getting close to a tree. And there it is. As soon as I turn that on, let me just click that off. There you go. There's a great example. So it's showing you how far away obstacles are. You see as I'm moving my hands 
the green is moving around a little bit. Okay, so if that's annoying to you, which it is right now, I'm going to turn that off. And all it's saying is detection radar. So we're going to have to have to try that out in the flight test if it'll actually stop and maybe avoid obstacles. Not even sure if it'll do that. Continuing on, here's a little controller icon tab, and we want. You can do remote controller calibration, control stick mode again. Remember how we already went through that? One, two, and three. That was in a different interface. I think that was the main menu. Custom button, so you can adjust this from the main flight interface as well as right here. And you have a remote controller guide. So if you forget what all the buttons do, you can just click on that and it gives you a diagram of what it all is. Clicking on this little battery icon. Now this is the battery settings interface. So this is a smart battery. It's telling you each cell all three cells, what the voltage is, overall voltage is here, and what the temperature is of the battery. So it's now 33 degrees Celsius. Intelligent return at low battery level. Yes, always want to turn that on. You can turn it off if you want, apparently. Aircraft will return when the battery level is only enough for returning to the return point. So good safety feature to have. I guess we're going to see how accurate that is in the reviews to come. Warning for low battery level. Okay, so these are the percentage of the warning that was weird so at the bottom initially it said zero but as i scrolled it up and down it now only can go down to 18 so 18 percent it'll give me some warnings flight time 1475 is that seconds i don't know but uh it does show us on the main hud too we'll check that out real quick clicking on the next tab icon down we have our gimbal settings so just like other drones we can do fpv or follow mode advanced settings, I click on it, and we can have control sensitivity, nice. So this is always good to lessen this down. I like to usually go down to 10 or 15. Unfortunately, that number is not changing. So that's kind of weird. See that number up there is staying at 30 for some reason. Expand the upper limit of the pitch angle. Okay, so if you wanted to pitch it up higher than it um, level, you can go ahead and do that. So it will go 30% higher. Uh, a lot of people just like it to stop when it gets level. And then the last one, there's another settings button here. So general settings. So I wanted Imperial. Uh, I'm not in the UK. So British system. It's saying MPJ. Never heard of that. Anyway, this is like the Imperial I'm used to. Miles, seconds, minutes. Voice broadcast. No idea what that is, but it did say that was one of the options. Wow, and it's in China. There's a little Chinese character that just came up. So maybe they can do a little bit of work with their app. It's a little bit clunky. Full screen access mode, double finger slide up or down. Swipe it down and the uh, all the telemetry and HUD settings will go away. Anyway, gonna go out of all this stuff and I just wanted to test that swipe double finger down. So if I double finger, there we go. So if you just want a perfectly unadulterated view, swipe down again. Yeah, two fingers swipe down again gives you all of your stuff there so the thing i was looking at remember it was like 15 1400 something seconds of flight time here is the capacity right here so if you're flying you can see how many minutes you have left right now it's 12 minutes okay guys got it back into tripod mode camera mode and i gotta say that it is pretty quick um switching off the arms you know just takes about a minute or less and you have a tripod and a handheld camera so let's power up the app and see how the interface looks launch the vision plus 2 app here and it's going to ask us what mode it's in so let's try to access device and there we go so where when we press access device i don't even have it on yet but i want to go into ai and camera mode wi-fi connection mode right because i'm going to go for straight from my phone to the actual drone okay it's just showing us going through again the tutorial and showing us how to put everything on let's power it on here i'm just going to do this tutorial real quick gimbal's going through its startup process okay and let's go next okay so you can either pop the cover off and scan that little qr code i'm going to go ahead and just connect manual it looks like the ssid is just egg something and it's one through eight so let's just try to connect to Wi-Fi manually. And there it is, right on the screen, I have egg X, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. And we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, connect. And we should be connected. Yeah. We'll go back into this screen here. Okay. And done. So we should be connected. And let's access device. So clicking on access. 
And then we have a cool little tutorial, noticing some mixed uh, Chinese information with English. So maybe they can hone that in a little bit. Uh, okay, and there we go. There's me in view. Very easy. Let's see if this gimbal button works here. Wow, pretty cool. So you can just like zoom it around with your thumb. Kind of cool. Follow mode, FPV mode, and lock mode. So like the lock's going to be when you are carrying it around. You know what I mean? And just moving it around. You see how it's staying super still in the video? The horizon staying perfectly level. And then if we go into follow mode, that should follow targets. Yeah, so you see how I just drew a box around myself? And I guess it can recognize my head or whatever. There we go. Hello. And it's kind of following me over. I'm just moving my head. And then there's FPV mode where if you pick it up, move it around, you see how we still get kind of a tilt. It's not keeping the horizon perfectly level, but it's stabilizing the whole thing. Let's see how it does if I move my phone landscape. Oh, cool. So yeah, the entire image goes into landscape mode. And it's going to be like the same lag time as it was when we had it in drone mode, right? Because it's the same drone um, processor and camera and everything. So we are still going to have a couple hundred milliseconds of that lag time, but it looks pretty good so far. Video, we just slide it to go into photo, slow motion. So it's going to do full HD. I just saw flash up on the screen, full HD 120. So that would be 1080p at 120. And then we can also do time lapse. So that's pretty cool. We can adjust our actual shot per second. I can go from one to 60 seconds. Then you have drone battery level up there, 64. It's showing we're connected. And then let's go into our options here. General settings, uh, cache when recording videos, maximum video cache, you can adjust that. Gimbal settings here, uh, gimbal follow mode. Wow, so you can adjust quite a few things within the gimbal mode here. Sensitive soft, gimbal scene mode, pitch lock, uh, three axis lock, horizontal fine tuning, so look at that. We have a lot of options here. We can go through all this stuff. So it does have a microphone apparently on the actual drone because remember this egg here is the entire drone sitting on a tripod. So there are positives and negatives with that. I mean, you are carrying around your full expensive drone as a camera, so more susceptible to dropping and bumping and stuff. But for the value and how many things you can use this for as far as conversion into a waterproof, a regular, and a handheld camera or tripod camera, that there's some pretty good value in that for people that have like maybe a limited amount of money and they just want to get one drone that can do all those options. This may be a very, very good candidate. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. I hope you really enjoyed that unboxing, inspection, setup, updating, and just testing everything out basically right here on the table. Of course, we didn't fly it today, but that's going to be in the further uh, tests. We're going to do a f initial flight test, like I was saying. We're going to do a waterproof test. We're going to do range test. We're going to do cinematic test. In the flight test, we'll test the obstacle avoidance or you know, however that front obstacle is working. And maybe we'll try to go up against some trees and stuff, see how that works. We'll also try the tracking. It does a follow me mode in the drone configuration and in the handheld camera and tripod configuration. So we'll try that too. Maybe tracking some other objects, people. So we're going to do all that stuff. I hope you guys will follow along on this series. Again, don't forget I'll have it up here on the top as far as the playlist for the Power Egg X. And also don't forget down in the description it has all the stuff I use for my filming and this drone itself down there in the description. So don't forget to check that. And of course, go ahead and subscribe and check out my channel for unbiased reviews, videos on drones and tech. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And it was as much fun for you as it was for me really getting in depth in this thing. And I will see you in the videos to come. Thanks for watching. <laughs>